Okay, this is our cookbook stand, and what's really neat about this, there's a little slot right in here. It's got little um, holdy things up front here so that you can keep your pages of your cookbook open. And this is a sketchbook, not a cookbook. But what's neat about this, because of that little slot, is you can take your art and you can put a new front on it. So now you have a wonderful coffeeology um, display. But maybe it's Christmas time and you want it to be Christmas. Well, maybe you could do the back side, you flip it around, and maybe you could paint this to have like hot cocoa in there and have some kind of wonderful saying, um, snowman or whatever. But this is my new coffeeology project. And we, this is a really interesting project. We used a lovely stencil to do the words. And this stencil includes the cup in case, make it upside right. It includes the cup so that if you want to paint it on another project, you're certainly welcome to, like something without a coffee cup as part of the um, surface. So um, I used the media acrylic paints, and I'll show you how to do those. And I used a whole bunch of faux finishy background techniques. It's not a hard project, but you definitely have some learning. Um, there's some education in this. Talk about color and the new media acrylics and stuff like that. So I think you're going to enjoy the lesson. I'm getting ready to do my insert for my... Um, cookbook stand and these are reversible so I can paint tea on one side coffee on the other today I'm going to paint the coffee part what we want to do is we want to put a coat of multi-purpose sealer on the whole thing back and front and that will prevent anything from warping you always want to do that with every kind of wood multi-purpose sealer is good for most surfaces too so you can use it on tin and and stone and all that kind of stuff you can mix it in with your paint and then when you apply it I'm going to apply it very lightly on the areas that are cut out so that I get even coverage without it going into my cracks. You're going to pick up some drying time extender, which is a medium that will make your paint not dry real fast. And we're going to put a nice thin coat. We don't want it puddly over our surface. Okay, and if your temperature outside is really hot and dry, then you might need to apply it heavier. You definitely want to go with what you've got going on. You know, if you're down in Florida and it's really humid, then um, you would make it very dry. And if you're over in, you know, Texas where maybe it's hot and dry, um, you might go ahead and make it puddly. Okay, so get that on there. And then we're going to take um, antique white, and we're just going to do a glaze of the antique white over the surface. So I'm just putting this right on top of the, um, and I'm going to not worry about my edges, and I'll wipe those back in a little bit. Even that out. Okay, just a little bit more. Okay, and then with this Italian sash brush, which is kind of a big floppy kind of bristly brush, I'm going to wet my brush with a little bit of that um, drying time extender and make a teeny, teeny bit of a mix, not really mixy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this color all over my edges. Just a little bit of a mix. Ooh, that's heavy. And then with my dirty brush, I'm going to go in and just kind of soften those colors out and kind of walk them in to different areas. Okay, and I think I lost every bit of my um, my bristly strokes, so I'll just go back to a slip slap.
Okay, so I'm going to take my dampened sea sponge and I'm going to use that instead. And that's going to take off some of the antique white. I'm going to stipple into those other colors. And I'm twisting and pouncing at the same time. Anything that you don't like, go back in and get some color. Do what you need to do to make it pretty. You could try doing this with saran wrap and some other things as well. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and look for unblended areas. If it's being stubborn, give it a little push and twist. Okay, now we're going to pick up a little bit of the Mississippi mud and the terracotta together. And I'm going to pinch my little bit of sea sponge here. Deepen that color. Okay, now it's getting a little bit kind of heavy and dark looking. So I'm going to wipe off my sea sponge. I'm going to pick up some of my antique white. And I'm going to go back in. And I'm just going to blend that down, twisting, blending. out my sea sponge and kind of go back in. Now maybe I'm looking to remove just a little bit where I think I've gotten a little bit heavy so I'll back things off. That's my brush. Dry that out. Just do feather blending. And I can go back and add just a little bit more of the sea sponge effect. Basically, what you want to do is keep blending until you like the look. Okay, go back into the sea sponge for texture. And see what I had to do there? I had to wipe it back and then put it back on. All right, and now we're going to do something kind of crazy and fancy. We're going to go into an oval rake. We're going to take water and we are going to spatter with water. And what's going to happen is the water doesn't like um, the, the um, drying time extender. So it's going to make it pull away and make all these little fancy circles and kind of almost look like coffee stains, which is perfect for what we got going on. Oops, spattering myself in the eyeballs. I'll go for some pretty big ones. Whenever you spatter, be careful of your neighbor, your TV screen glasses, your cell phone, um, because spattering goes everywhere. Okay, I'm going to get you in close so you can see what I've got going on. It's a pretty cool technique. Oops, wrong way. See all of these little circles? That is the technique. Now what we'll do is we'll wait, wait until all this dries and then I'll just kind of keep digging holes, see them up here um, in the surface, and then it'll dry just fine and you can paint just like normal. Okay, for the background for this piece, um, which you can just do as a neutral piece, that's what I'm doing is maybe just a kind of decorative but neutral look. I'm going to go ahead, I've got it based with neutral gray. Go figure, neutral look, neutral gray. You can do all the pieces the same. I like that technique because it's interesting but it's not distracting and this should just be something that can sit there and be empty or it can hold your art. 
these um, panels are amazing because you can just turn them over. You can have a coffee one, a Christmas one, you know, gingerbread cookies for the Christmas um, Christmas time, um, you know, Easter, all the things. Anyway, so you can have your cookbook stand, but you can make it seasonal. So this piece needs to just fit all the seasons. You could do it in a green, you know, whatever whatever colors flip your switch. Okay, so I'm going to go with soft black over and just glaze it with soft black which is turning out just a little bit more purple than I wanted. We'll see where we end up with this because I may have to do a couple things. I think I wanted it a little bit more brown so I'm going to get out some brown and we'll have that conversation. Get out some burnt umber. Go ahead and go right over that with the burnt umber. So it's going to be a 50 50 mix of those two colors. So I want a kind of a gray y, brown y, kind of burnt umber y, reddish look. I don't know what I'm going for. I can picture it in my head. Okay, so I'll put that off to the side and I'll take my sponge and then I'll just start. Sponging. And what I'm seeing right now is that I don't like this one bit. So we're going to go ahead and just cancel that out. Okay, I'm going to base it with black green. I just wiped off my stuff and I'll go ahead and base with that black green and then more than likely I'll shade the edges and stuff like that with a brownie black color and just make it be a neutral color. Okay, we're going to take just a little bit of terracotta and dry it off on a paper towel and then we're going to come into our coffee. And we're going to give it a little bit of yummy brownness and depth. Okay, then we're going to go in with our short bright brush into lamp black and we're going to shade the contents of our cup with black. And that gives it just a little bit more depth. Okay, now we're going to shade the cup with a little bit of peacock blue up under our rim. Just kind of give it a hint of another color. I'll walk it down. Dirty finger. Fade it in the middle. Okay. Do the same thing to the other side. Walk it down. Fade to the middle. Okay, now we're mixing terracotta plus the um, peacock teal, and we are going to shade as things come around the corner there. Let's bring that cup around. And then as we're in the middle of the cup, we'll go ahead and just shade with the terracotta. We can bring this terracotta color down. Just 
little hints and touches of color. Okay, we're going to take autumn red and we're going to dry rub in the middle of our cup. And that's not showing up so well. So we're going to try watermelon. Watermelon slice. It's got just a little bit more vibrancy. Let's see what we get. And neither is that. Okay, so I got it to stay by just kind of laying it in there and then just mushing it around just a little bit. Just need some brightness right in the middle. Okay, now we're going to go into our steam and we're going to make little curly cues. Make it steamier. And I'm using Whispering Turquoise. And I'll repeat where I need it. And I have to shade my steam, which is something I've never painted before. And then we'll go into a little bit of white and just dirty brush. <coughs> Pardon me. And just not the same everywhere so that it looks steamy. Okay, I'm going to use this really wonderful brocade stencil um, and I'm going to dry rub with black plum over the red area and I'll just use a dome brush, totally plop my brush clean on the paper towel. I want this soft and I want it subtle, so I'm not, you know, trying to make it be like stipple, stipple, stipple. Okay. And there's our cute little design on the cup. Okay, we're going to shade the steam to separate. And I think this one needs to come down here. And that's just going to be just to give it definition. Okay, and I'm using neutral gray. And we're going to shade it coming out of the coffee as well. Get the off to one side a little bit. And just to bring our colors together, I think we got to go into a little bit of the peacock and just really accent this little center heart deal. And that way our colors just kind of do what they're supposed to do. Soften it with your finger if it's too, too bold. Alright, we're going to add a little bit of highlights to our steam with white.
lighten it up just a little bit. All right, so we're going to go into, what are we going into? Black Plum. And we're going to shade our cup. Bottom. And then cinch those sides in with some shading. Okay, we're gonna add some little kind of like swirls here. Steamy kind of things are really hot down there moments. Soften our teal just a little bit. We need to shade our handle on our cup with our neutral gray, I think. Maybe neutral gray and the terracotta. Just tuck that back there. I think we'll go over here with the same color. You shade the sides for roundness. That makes the cup disappear back so it gives it oops and then we bowl for paints um, it gives us the appearance of um, the cup is indeed round when it's flat so we'll go ahead and just sink that down and you'll notice I'm stroking over and over again and that's because I'm walking my float out I'm floating the paint across across the area where I want the color. Okay, and that got just a little bit dirty looking, so what we'll do is we'll go in with a little bit of, let's go in with white and maybe bleach sand. And then we'll go ahead and give it just that kind of shine highlight up the middle. Teacups are shiny. We'll go into white for the cup. And that's like a dry brush. We can do the same thing up here on the rim. I can get a good angle on it. And then right below that rim we'll go peacock and the neutral gray. Just kind of line that to give it the effect of having a rim. Okay, I'm going to use the media, the fluid media, media fluid acrylic. Sorry, and I'm going to use this because they are sheer and have no um, fillers and stuff, which means we're going to get really, really good color. Okay, I'm going to use my pop top, I've got a new set of these things. Pop off the lids, and I'm going to do some. Oops, that one needs to be shaken. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start off, I've got my um, Raw Umber Media Acrylic, and I'm going to get out some black too. And I'm going to try to shade these and highlight them at the same time. So I'm going to do a little scumble with the Media um, in the Raw Umber to each side of the Coffeeology word. So I'm drawing off on my paper towel, and notice that they're just applied very sheer. The only way I'm going to get the detail that I want is to do this sheer. And I think it'd be very flat and boring if we just, you know, stippled on some letters. Now I'm going to go into raw sienna in the media acrylics, 
and that's going to change my tone to a little bit warmer tone. I can have some of that on each of my letters so that I don't have isolated colors. I'm going to go back into the raw umber and work my way towards those colors. Okay, maybe I'll just scumble on the edges of them. Okay, now I'm going to go into my black and I'm going to come over to the edge. My black needs to be shaken, it appears. If your paint doesn't show at all, then more than likely you're needs to be shaken. Okay, so I'll go over to the edge and I'll just kind of give them a little bit of detail to the bottom and to the edges. And I'll switch into the umber and do the bases of the others. Okay, so let's take a peek, see what we think. Okay, yeah, so that gives it just kind of an interesting fade. That is going to be perfect. Okay, I'm going to wipe out my brush, and then I want Perk Up to be um, more red, so I'm going to go into Transparent Red Iron Oxide. And this might be just a little bit to um, orange. Let me see if I got uh, something else. Yeah, that's better. So I'm going to go into quinacridone burnt orange. And we'll put our perk up. just a little bit at the top. Notice I'm just scumbling over it and I'm not stippling. We can go into our burnt umber and we'll darken the base. And I think our Espresso Yourself and our Stay Grounded need to be more in the brown family. So I'm going to go with the um, Raw Umber. And I'm going to do it pretty straight, just the color. Okay, I'm going to attempt to use Raw Sienna and just do one kind of in those coffee stained colors. of those letters with our brown brush. Not have them be isolated. We'll go with our reds and our quinacridone, and maybe quinacridone and umber. Might be a better color combination for us. Let's 
like red, but not as red as this. We'll go into the raw umber, which I think needs to be shaken just a little bit. There we go. That looks a little better. And we shade the bottoms. Fastest shading you'll ever do of lettering. Okay, and I think we'll go straight um, raw umber and the very bottom ones. brush I'm using is a dome brush. They're super affordable brushes and they're domed on top and they put the paint down into the stencil right where you need it. So good brush to have. Okay, what color for this one, right? I think I'm going to have to go ahead and just do this same umber. Raw umber. And maybe we'll fade it to the raw sienna mixed dirty brush back into the umber kind of keeping our attention focused towards the middle okay I'm going to go into the black Just give that coffeeology a little bit more depth. And I think I want to go ahead and deepen this bottom one and a little bit on the sides over here. Take a look. Okay, I'm going to do some drop shading on the letters with a pro round brush. I'm going to use a fairly wide stroke with the raw umber mixed with water. And then I'm going to go back into my black mixed with water and I'm going to edge right next to that letter. to give it that extra little definition. Okay, we're going to do the um, take time to smell the coffee letters with thinned neutral gray. Really thinned will make it washy and that'll make it fade out. Okay, we're going to go on the coffeeology word. Make sure I'm dry. With black, pretty strong black, right next to the letters. Don't leave spaces. Okay, we'll do the take time to, to sip the coffee or take life one sip at a time with thinned black. I need it thinner. Thinned isn't making it any thinner, so we're just going to go with black then.
All right, I mixed some quinacridone burnt orange with the raw umber, and now I'm going to go over to the edges, and I'm going to blot my brush a little bit more. And we're going to give, not everywhere, lovely kind of burnt in frame. Catch the edges. Makes such a difference when you frame things. Now I'm going to go into just the umber. And I'm going to bowl over some paints here. And I want to go um, wet everywhere and just deepen some of these corners burnt them kind of like make them a little bit more coffee stained okay I think we need some diamonds on the side so I am going to go ahead and use soft black or black. I think maybe we're going to have to go black. And I'm going to use this 13 in 1 stencil. It's got um, polka dots and a border and checks and all the things and diamonds in many sizes and pretty handy stencil to have around. I'm using the checks to make myself line up really nice and straight. I'm going to go ahead and just stipple these and do both sides. All right, I've hated all the black things I've tried, so I'm going to get rid of those. I've washed them off with a paper towel. I'll work on a little bit of burnt umber. I'm just going to really bring that color in. Just floating it with a big glaze brush. Okay, that's getting better. These media paints are freaking phenomenal. Absolutely amazingly phenomenal. The colors are true, they're full pigment. I've been painting for a really long time and craft paints always jip you a little bit in the color and the saturation of the color. And so these are craft paints, but at a professional level. So you're gonna have vibrant painting and vibrant colors. And that's getting a little bit better. I think what's bugging me is I've got a disconnect between the top and the bottom. So I think what I want to do is come up in here and just warm that up just a little bit with that color. And I think we'll go ahead and warm this up as well. Just wipe back our rim. Okay, and I think also I'm just a little bit warm in here. I think my colors got just a little bit yellow. So I'm going to take my um, crescent brush, and I'm going to take a clean paper towel. And we're going to go back in and we're going to dry it off a little bit more than that. We'll go back in and see about adding in a little bit of highlight in the middle area. The end is where all the magic happens when you're painting. I wonder if I could just kind of go across and just... I could re-stencil that because it is a stencil. I don't really want to. Okay, so I'm not going to go and do that to myself. So let's go get our, um, our White Wonder Rake. And let's go into our white and water it down. 
I'll put a heavy handle brush and I'm going to back up. I'm going to make it snow in the middle. And then we're going to make it black on the edge. Always tap off on your paper, on your palette. If I anchor my brush, I can get these things to fall just about exactly where I want them. If I want it to snow, I lift my handle up. Okay, yeah, that's getting a little bit better. is not heavy enough. It's solid. See the difference in the sound? Makes a big difference in how it performs too. So I'll take this espresso-y color. So see how that brightened it up by darkening the edges. So sometimes if we need things darkened we can go about it a little bit differently. these fantastic stencils that um, are banding stencils. So this is going to do your straight line and then you can check on or dot or diamond or candy cane stripe or hash tag kind of thing. I'm just going to line it up there. I'm using Heritage Brick. And I'm just going to stencil right on there and it's going to make a perfectly straight little line and then I'll slide it on down the road. Alright, to carry my color around I'm going to go into the peacock find my palette knife I was using. Tap off over here. This will just carry that color just around and around. Okay, I forgot about my little corner swirly bits. I'm going to try them with a little bit of this teal that I'm going to sink down with some black. So I'm doing the peacock. And then I'll go into black. And just kind of shade down the base so that it kind of self highlights. And maybe we need to put a little bit of this color place else, a little bit more peacock someplace. Maybe, 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 maybe. Okay, so we'll take a look at it again. Maybe we get a little bit of that going on here. that perks it up just a little bit, don't you think? I'm going to add a little streak of the peacock on the sides of the mug. Maybe a little bit of peacock dry rubbed in the little corners. In the corners. And then I think maybe we could have just a little bit here and there on our edges. Not everywhere, just a little bit. Yeah, I don't think I want drop shading with that. 